This shit sound like an AA meeting. <laughs> nah, nah, it's good. It's just the whole tone of it. Your yeah. tone and my tone is the saddest shit ever. Thank you for sitting down. I appreciate uh, you. You've been doing a lot of interviews recently after not really doing many interviews for most of 2018. What was the past year like for you? The past year was just cool, just chilling, relaxing. You know, just still in the studio every day, working. Let's talk about The Wizard. Where does that name come from? It come from OGD, rest in peace. He, uh, he was calling me The Wizard. Your uncle? Yeah. What did that, what did, what did that mean at the time? At the time, he just felt like, man, you got it figured out. You know what you're supposed to do. You know what's ahead. You know what's right. Trust in yourself. Trust yourself. You're the wizard. Why did you feel like now was the right time to introduce that persona? It's probably one of those personas that resonates towards me. I mean, just like, it defined me in a lot of ways. And also just him, him passing and it was just like me continuing his legacy of just even me believing in him and like, damn, like, you really seen the vision, you really had the vision for this. So just going back, but also just me taking what's already there and just critiquing it and um, just close the chapter out of everything I've done so far up until now. Some of your most successful music has come from a dark place. Do you think fans expect you to always go through that pain? Yeah, fans, they, they expect me to always have a certain pain in, uh, a certain pain in my music. But not just have a certain pain in my music, but actually go through things, get my side of the story. Um, it's, it's crazy, but it's true. Does that ever feel like a burden? To have At to times it can be a burden because you know you want to be a person to change. You want to see the growth, even for myself. Not just my fans, but for myself, I want to allow myself to grow. And I want to allow, look myself in the mirror and be like, man, you, I can, see, I can see the growth myself. But it's just like it could become a burden just being trying to relive those moments over and over again. But this is what made the best music. This is what got the best out of me by making something negative and turning it to my positive by making music from it and having success from it. But the burden becomes like, I gotta keep living this way and keep living every line, every day. And it's just like, that's not who I am anymore. That's just who I was. And that's just me trying to live, relive moments and like continue to chase the same high. Not just for myself, but for the people around me, just love it. They enjoy it even as much as I enjoy it. They enjoy it probably more than I enjoy it. And I gotta suffer from everything that the backlash to come with it. When we don't get older now, you know what I'm saying? It's time to put certain things to rest, move on from it, and be like, you just gotta set me how I am. Do you think the music is starting to reflect that change? I think the music that's coming will reflect that change. I think this is me putting rest to the old formula, the old way of making music. As you said, this is like the closing of a chapter. Yeah, this is the closing of it. What do you think about the way some fans have kind of labeled you as the male Beyonce in that, you know, Beyonce is making music that empowers women. You're making music that is empowering the men. How do you feel about that kind of comparison? I feel great because it could be, to be on the reason I say to, I feel great about that is because I feel like Beyonce is one of the, not the greatest, one of the greatest. And to be compared to that is great. But also just, I want to be able to use my voice for a lot of good in men and not just the bad. Not when you're just going through a breakup or you just want to have a party lifestyle. You just want to party. I'm speaking for the men that's going through something, just want to party. I want to speak for the men that's in relationships. I want to speak for men that's in love. I want to speak for men that have found true love. I want to speak for men that then went through something, but also felt like they wasn't going to become the person that they are, and they listened to future, and they became a better person. I don't want to make your wrongs right anymore. I want to shed light on the right that's in right, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to be that, that voice, just to how, she, how her voice is, and someone that's like powering um, women. I want to empower men with that same power, but also in the right way. 
Are your kids at an age now where they can really listen to your music and understand your lyrics? They're not at an age they can understand it. They have to go through certain things in their life to understand it. Because they still gonna look at me as their dad. And it's certain things that I don't just open up to my kids about or it's certain things I don't even allow them to see. Do you think at some point you'll have to sit them down and kind of explain, like, this is what I said here, but really this? Yeah, I feel like I do have to sit them down and understand the music, where I was at at that time, you know what I'm saying? Just explain it every moment of my life and why I said what I said, what I did, what I did. Like, why it was, like, unconscious of me to do certain kind of records. Well, why it was unconscious of me to say certain tweets and certain things that I put out there to the masses and, you know, so it'll come a time and I think it's something that needs to be said. On the one hand, it's like the best diary that you could ever leave for your children and that'll last forever. But on the other hand, there's that very, you know, personal stuff that you were going through. Right. Your longtime engineer, Seth Ferkins, passed away this last September. Can you talk a little bit about what he meant for your music and for your life? He meant everything to music and he meant everything to my life. He was my brother, he's a friend, he was somebody I could talk to about anything. And just him passing played a tremendous effect on, of just, just me, personal, personal. Um, it was his dream just as much as mine at this point. I feel like that was my partner. So to lose my partner still is a big deal for me. Something I haven't got over and just trying to get more comfortable with even talking about it. Cause it's my first time really just talking about it after he been passed. He been, he done passed away for like a year. So it's really like my first time really just talking about it now. You know what I mean? And so I still haven't got comfortable. I'm still missing him every day and still think about it. So I'm just trying to find the words and just saying anything. Did that big loss change the way you operate in the studio? At first it changed the way I operate at the studio because I'm just like, I compare everything to self. Like, self wouldn't do this, self didn't do that. Just mad, 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 just angry. Not having them around, but it didn't change anything. Before Future and Hendrix, you took a break from social media was it the same this time around for this album? I want. I didn't. I didn't plan on taking a break. It was just like I just didn't post, and it just felt more comfortable and comfortable. I got more comfortable and not posting and not being on Instagram. It's crazy. I did it for like a whole year. What does that kind of break do for your mental state? Certain things people say about me is because that's the energy that I probably put out, and they just going off with what they see. So I can't be, I can't blame them for what they see and what I put out, but also just knowing like, damn, that's, if I was misunderstood from something, I want to be able to work on that. Like I want to be able to work on my weaknesses and build them up and be my strength. You know what I'm saying? And really sit back and think about it, analyze everything, analyze everything around me and analyze everyone around me. People I choose to be in my life just to make a better me. It's just you and your thoughts. It's me and my thoughts, and it's just distractions from just normal shit that happen every day that I gotta just deal with. It seems like you and Young Thug were always locked in together over the past year. What is it about being in the studio with him that's special? It's like my twin. It's like seeing me all over again. He younger than me, and I just don't want him to make the same mistakes I made. I want him to be bigger than me in every way, you know what I'm saying? So just me being around him and understanding him, he understanding me. Just being these two big superstars that have two different missions once we together is like, to me it's still something special. It's like, I feel like nobody, nobody want to see that happen because it's too genuine, it's too right, it's too powerful. But we trying to find a way to make it more big and more powerful. There's no ulterior motives. It's just pure, it's just all about just real love. What advice have you given him? To it's numerous of things, even with him telling me things that make me better. 
like he's super smart. He always tells me certain things. I'm like, man, sometimes I need to, I need you to be my eyes and I need you to be my ears. It's just like, I'm not gonna see everything. I'm not gonna hear everything. That's what I got you for. Like two, three days ago, he was just telling me the most realest shit ever on the phone. And I just listened to it because I was just had the time to reflect, like, and just some of the things that he was saying just it hit home. And I was just like, you right. I just never had time to change that certain things about me, certain things people love about me, then not even trying to, not even recognizing the things that people love about me but don't like, but they might put up with it because they love me. And it's like, damn, did I take advantage of that? Or did I take advantage of real loyalty? Did I take advantage of friendships? Did I take advantage of just me being who I am? So it's just certain things that you recognize and you just take time out to recognize. And you like, I need to change it, or you know what I mean? Like, it'll make me a better person. What is that next step in making that change and changing that about yourself? Just making sure it's genuine. You know what I'm saying? Me making the right choices. Who to bring in my life is going to be something I regret or going to be something that's going to end up being a mistake that I made. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that, those are the things I need to change. And I can't look at it as just, that's that future mentality. That's that rock star shit. So if it's rock star shit, it's my legacy. This is what I'm leading. This is what I'm leaving. This is why I want people to talk about me, good or bad. I don't care what they say. I just want them to talk about me when I'm when I'm no longer here, I need to I need to stop just that not caring attitude. When you probably have a million dollars or five million dollars, you could do this shit, but come on, future, you having this much success and you're doing this, you still doing the same shit you was doing like if you was in the streets. But I think back like, damn, I'm from the streets, so fuck it. Even though I am what I am today, I can't still have carry I carry that mentality the way I think. And that not caring mentality, I carried it on into music, into business, into where I move. Just like, it's just time to stop that. It's like it's an end, like you're not in the streets anymore. It's over, that's your past life. When you grow up that way though, as you say, when you come up that way, it's hard to unlearn all that stuff that helped you survive. Right. Like I said, it's a mentality. The street shit, it's like it as a street shit. Like, who cares? Like, used to be doing this, now you're doing this, and it couldn't be worse than where you was at. Nothing couldn't be worse than standing on the corner. So just leaving that lifestyle alone, like, forget it. It's over with. Stop trying to relive it and stop trying to make an excuse of why I act the way I act. It's because now I know better now. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. That's just part of me maturing. What makes you happiest right now? What makes me happy is knowing my family happy. Is there anything about which you still feel like you're misunderstood? I misunderstood the fact that how much I love love. I love the thought of finding real love. I love the thought of loving somebody that loved me just as much. You know? Do you feel any closer to finding that for yourself? It ain't about feeling closer to it because you know you just want it to happen because the level of love that I want, I want unconditional. I die for you love. I die for you, you die for me type of love. I ride for you, you ride for me love. Not ride when it's good, only when it's beneficial. Ride when it's tough. When you find it, it'll come, it'll come when it comes. It's just like you don't search for it. I feel like true love just happened. It just come from nowhere, like blindside you. Thank you, man. Hey, brother. This shit is sad. <laughs> I think I shook the sadness off. <laughs> there we go.